Module three has two lectures. So if we go back to Canvas and we take a look at what's expected this week or weeks, depending on what semester you take this course, uh, module three, getting started in InDesign, is our first real module where we're gonna create things in InDesign. You should remember from module two that we just opened files and we became comfortable with looking at files and determining what was a good file or a good package and what wasn't. And if it wasn't a good package, how could we fix it or we could pre-flight it and relink images and things like that. But starting with module three, we're going to jump in and start using InDesign. And it's almost like we're gonna take a giant step backwards. So for module two, we were taking finished products that were fully designed and we were figuring out how to get them output or get them exported or printed. And now we're going to kind of go all the way back to the beginning of the book and we're going to cover chapters one through four. And we're going to just talk about how to create a document, how to add text and color to your document. And we'll take kind of baby steps in that direction. And so if you're feeling a little overwhelmed after module two, um, that's kind of a normal feeling because we're doing something that, as, as you know, is at the end of your textbook, chapters 19 and 20. But we did it first because I feel like it's important to understand what the ultimate goal of creating your artwork is. And so if we jump into module three and we click on the learning objectives, I'd like you to read through these at your leisure. Um, all of these things should be second nature to you by the time that you're done module three. And so you should read through them now, but also when you're done the module, come back to this and take a look at it. But what I want to point out is if you go to the lecture page, there's actually two lectures in module three. There's the getting started in design, which is actually in two parts. It's the longer lecture and it's the one that I'm going to cover right now. And then after we're done, you should also um, participate or watch in the lecture for basic text. And because there's two lectures in this module during the traditional um, fall or spring semester, we usually spend at least a week and a half, if not two weeks, working on this module. In the summer, however, um, you'll be spending one week on that, so keep that in mind. So let's get started. So getting started in InDesign, we're going to cover chapters one and two. Um, as I said, this is going to be a longer lecture than the basic text lecture um, because we're going to do an overview of what graphics are before we even start talking about InDesign. And so the first half of this lecture is all about the printing and publishing industry and key terms that you need to know in order to be successful as a graphic artist or just as someone who wants to use InDesign to create something. And so there are a couple types of publishing that you should be aware of, and the first is traditional publishing. It is the creation of printed documents done by hand through the use of cameras and film, and all steps in the process are done manually. So if we're thinking about printed books, printed books can be created in computers like you would do in InDesign. You would create the layout and then you would send it somewhere and they would print it for you. But before we had computers, we still printed books. And so if you're thinking about creating uh, something uh, that is printed before we had computers it would be done using this traditional publishing process and the way that we did it was we did everything by hand um, there are terms that you'll hear throughout our semester if you take art 1135 printing fundamentals you'll hear these um, if you take photography classes you'll hear them too um, a lot of these terms come that we use in 2017 when I'm recording this video um, come directly from traditional publishing processes like masks. Photoshop talks about masks and the idea of mask is that it's non-destructive meaning I don't get rid of any part of the image but it allows me to block out some of the area while while still seeing other areas of the image. That relates directly back to traditional publishing. If I had a picture of myself and the example I would use is I'm standing in front of mountains and I don't want the mountains, I just want the picture of myself to use on a project, I need to get rid of the mountains and in 2017 I could select them in Photoshop and hit the delete key and I could just delete them. But if you delete them you can never come back to them. In traditional publishing we would take masking paper which blocks out light on a film camera and you would create a hole in that masking paper anywhere you'd want to see the image and you would leave the masking paper on the background um, which would block out any part of the image you didn't want. So you had to manually kind of cut the shape of the person so the person would show through on the image but this yellow masking paper which I'll show on a future slide would uh, would block out the image. So if I took a picture of that or I tried to expose that image to a printing plate the only part that would show through would be the part that I have not covered up or I didn't mask. There are so many uh, things that relate back to traditional publishing that happen that we probably can't go through all of them, 
but all photo editing was done by hand. Um, when we talk about the idea, let's go back to Photoshop again, of dodging and burning and cropping and almost all the things that you would do in Photoshop, they weren't things that were created specifically for Photoshop. They were things that you would do traditionally with a giant film camera, like you can see on my slide here, and then you would translate that for the digital output. Um, if you wanted to do design variations in traditional publishing, it took forever because you had to redo things over and over again. And because it was a manual process, if you messed up anywhere along the way, um, you would have to start over from scratch. You can see the man in the picture here has uh, type sheets and he is creating designs and he purchased these sheets that have all the typefaces he might want to use and he literally has to scratch them off into his design so that he can use these. Because he didn't have a computer to type the words in, he would have to buy these sheets and manually create the words and, and lay out what he wanted on, on his workspace. And so design variations took a long time. If you wanted to change the color of an umbrella, which is another example that I'll show in a future slide, um, you couldn't just hit a button and say change all the red in the image to be blue or all the blue in the image to hit red, which is something that we can do really easy uh, in current day. But back then, you would have to do photo retouching, not photo retouching with Photoshop, but photo retouching with, with film and your hands, and you would paint over it and make them do different things. And then um, my personal uh, viewpoint is that with traditional publishing, organization had to be done by hand. That's not my opinion, that's a fact. And so if you wanted to include 20 images with your project, you had to physically include 20 images with a big folder that you would send to a commercial printer. And my opinion is that one of the biggest benefits of digital publishing that we talk about today or using computers to publish is the idea of organization. And so we already covered that in module two, right? InDesign will organize for us as long as we put in good information, right? There's always that phrase, crap in, crap out, right? And so if you try to package a broken InDesign project, it's not going to package properly. But as long as you do your work on your end to pre-flight and organize your project, you can hit a button and InDesign will package it for you and create an organized file that you can send to a commercial printer to print with. In traditional publishing, you had to do that all by hand. If you wanted to include a typeface or an image or a layout, you had to physically create that and then you had to package it nicely. That's why it's called packaging in InDesign. You had to package it nicely up in a folder or a big envelope and then you had to ship it or mail it or have it couriered or delivered to your local commercial printer so that they could start the process to print whatever you wanted to print.